What's up everybody? Let me go over tissue samples, cloning, isolating, and agar transfers and the differences between the four. So let's start with tissue samples. This is a great example of taking a tissue sample from a fresh mushroom, placing it on an agar plate, and getting amazing growth right off the bat. That doesn't usually happen. So the first step in cloning a mushroom is taking a tissue sample. This is very close to a cloned mushroom, just by the way it is looking right now. But it usually looks like this. This is another tissue sample that I took. Uh, same tub, different mushroom, but you can tell that we're getting rhizomorphic growth. This is where agar transfers uh, plays a huge part in this. So I will cut a wedge out of this area right here where I'm seeing very nice growth in hopes that I can pull off something like that. So all in all, this is uh, taking a tissue sample and trying to clone the mushroom. This is more of a clone. So the first step in cloning a mushroom is taking a tissue sample to carry over characteristics of what you're trying to chase. And so isolating a culture is different than uh, taking tissue samples and cloning a mushroom. So for example, uh, this is a tissue sample of something that's already been isolated. I just took it from another tub, so we'll just say that's just another tissue sample. Right here is an isolation. So this was grown out over multiple agar transfers, and this came from multiple plates uh, to get from this to this. So that is an isolation. So when it comes to mushroom cultures, uh, when you get cultures from vendors, a lot of the time they're isolating them already. A lot of a lot of vendors they do a great job and they're they're killing it out there. But there's sometimes that you will get a culture from someone, and it's kind of slow, it's kind of weak, and so taking agar transfers to new plates and chasing fast and aggressive growth is a way you can isolate that culture. But sometimes that's not enough because over time I can transfer this over and over and over to new agar plates. I can uh, change the agar recipe. I can take transfers of good growth, but all in all, it can lose its vigor and strength. And so that's where tissue samples play a huge part in bringing back cultures to make sure that they are strong, aggressive, so that being said, I hope this makes sense to you guys. Um, sometimes my brain kind of works weird when it comes to stuff like this. So let me kind of explain something in a way that I've never really heard before. So let me try to explain something that kind of goes on in my head. And I figured I'm just going to share it. Why not? So here's an old plate. Ignore the fact that it's old. Uh, refer to this plate as your tub. You have mushrooms that grow right here and you get big mushrooms, you get pins, you get some aborts, you know, and a lot of the times when we grow out some cultures, we don't get the desired flushes that we want. Here's another example. So you can tell that we have some rhizomorphic growth on this side, some tomentose growth over here, but you can tell that this part of the plate is fruiting already. So that's, that is what we want. If I were to transfer this plate, I would transfer it from right here to grow that out to start isolating the plate. But also in a way, uh, it's kind of weird. So, you know, I could take one of these small little pins and I could place it on a plate and that would be considered a tissue culture. So again, refer to this plate as a tub. If I were to take this culture, put it to grains, uh, my tub would pretty much look like this. I would get some parts that would fruit well, uniform, they would fruit at the same time. I would get other parts of the tub that wouldn't fruit at all. It wouldn't be wall to wall. It wouldn't be a full canopy flush. It would be sporadic. This is where transfers play into part, tissue samples play into part. I could go in here and take one of these small little pins, place it on a plate, and then I'm closer to cloning a mushroom off of agar right off the bat, which is really cool when you get plates that pin like that you can take an instant tissue culture and you're one step closer to getting really good tubs. But the same goes for taking a piece of agar right here and placing it onto a new plate. And then you start to isolate that culture and very well get, you know, wall to wall, full canopy flushes. Again, sorry if this doesn't make sense. This is the only way it makes sense to me, 
I just like referring to plates as my tubs. You know, if you, if I were to take this to a tub, you know, it would very, it would grow out very well and uniformed and in theory, get a full tub of mushrooms. This is one that I grew out already and this was a wall to wall flush. So all in all, when it comes to the grow that I just showed you, that was from taking tissue samples, cloning that mushroom, then going down the line and isolating it and taking multiple tissue samples over time to get that outcome. Anyways, guys, you know, let me know if there's a way I can explain that a little bit better. I know I'm not the best at this, so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting there. But anyways, guys, much love. Peace out.